Hey guys, I just want to show you one more way to hook up our eight directional movement system to our sprites. And today we're going to be using sprite sheets. So by having all of our sprites on just one sheet. And this can be really good, especially if you have a lot of characters with a lot of animations. It can get tiresome to have to organize eight times however many characters that you have and be referring to all of their different sprites. If we just have one sprite sheet for every character and then reuse the same kind of piece of code and just changing some variables such as the size of the frame and the number of frames in the animation, we can make this work for a lot of different characters. So one thing to keep in mind, again, the order of the animations is going to be important. So not necessarily because that's how you have to code it, but just the way that I'm going to be coding it. So make sure your sprites are in this order. Basically, I start at zero and then go up in increments of 45. So I have my upright, up, and so on, because that's the order that we're going to be setting our sprites in. All right, so some other things to just take note of. I want you to write down how big your frame is. And you're gonna want this to be the same for the width and height of the frame. So if it's not that right now, then you should space them so that the frame is the same width as it is height. So for my one, for example, I have 17 as my width and height. In here, all of these are separated by 17. And also just take note of where you want the character's anchor point to be, because we're gonna to refer to this in code as the X offset and Y offset. So for example, mine, the X offset is eight across and 16 for the Y. So just make notes of those for your sprite and let's get to actually coding. So we'll come back up to our character object and we're gonna declare those variables that we were just talking about. So X offset equals eight for me, Y offset 16 and the frame size is 17. And now the way that we're going to do this is we're going to be drawing part of our sprite in each step. So we're not gonna be drawing a sprite, we're gonna take over the draw event and then we're going to draw sprite part, we're gonna use that function to draw one of these at a time. And when we do this, we want to know both what X frame to draw from is what we're gonna call it and what Y frame, right? So which strip in our sprite sheet do we wanna draw and then which individual frame in our row do we wanna draw? I'm gonna to refer to that as X frame and Y frame. And as the character animates, what we are going to do is increase X frame every step so that it kind of runs through one of these animations. And then to get the character to idle, we would just be setting the X frame to zero. All right, so let's actually get started and hopefully this will make a bit more sense. So let's just set that X frame and Y frame to zero to start off with. And while we're here, I'm also gonna set the animation length and speed. So for me, I had four frames in my animation, so I'm gonna put four. And the animation speed is just how fast you want it to animate. I'm gonna pick a pretty slow one, but if you have a fast animation, you might wanna make this higher. I'm gonna come into the step and then either delete or comment out all of this. So I'm gonna comment out. So I'm just gonna go slash and then this little star, and that's gonna comment all of the code between those two so we don't get the old system contributing to this. So let's now come into the draw event. Now the function that we're going to use is going to be draw sprite part. The sprite that we wanna draw is whatever you have called your sprite sheet. So mine is called SPR sprite sheet. And I might do this over multiple lines so that we can see what we're doing. So the sub image is just going to be zero because this sprite sheet, it just has one frame on it. Now it's asking us left and top. And this kind of means where we are going to start drawing from. So the X position on the sprite of the top left corner of the area to draw. So that kind of means, for example, if I was drawing this one right here, I would want this point. And then I would say that the width that I wanna draw is this much, which is 17 for me, and 17 this way. So that's the frame size and you could split those two up if you have a different frame width and height. So the way that we actually get the left and top is the X frame. And depending what direction we are currently animating through, we are gonna have a number, but I want it to kind of jump over 
in increments of our frame size. I don't want to, for example, just play this. Even though that's what X-Frame is going to be doing as we animate through this, our incrementing value for the animation is probably going to be a decimal, but I still want to display whole frames. So what I'm going to do is floor the X-Frame and then multiply it by the frame size. So that way, for example, an X frame, when X frame is equal to 0 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.78, we are always just going to get that first frame. And now for the Y frame, it's a very similar story, and we're going to just multiply that by the frame size. For the Y frame, we're going to be setting this as a whole number, depending on what direction that we're facing. So now for the width, we know that we just have to put frame size and the same for the height. And for the X and Y, let's just put X and Y for now. All right, and now we have to actually code the parts that are going to be manipulating the X frame and the Y frame. So the X frame, we're going to want to increment to get the animation actually running through its animation. So to get the frames moving across. So I am going to go X frame plus equals, and now this is where our animation speed value is going to come in. So we're going to go whatever you put here, and then we're gonna go over our room speed. And you can play around with these numbers to get something that looks good for you. All right, but I also, since we have to be managing this ourselves, I wanna check that we're not going past where we should in the animation. Because if our X frame is, for example, more than four, then we're going to start grabbing parts of the sprite that aren't actually there. And eventually we'll be drawing nothing. So we don't want our X frame to be larger than our animation length. So we're gonna check right here. If X frame is larger than or equal to the animation length, then we're gonna set the X frame equal to zero. Right, so we're gonna reset the animation and it's gonna run through it again. All right, now for the Y frame, we are going to set this to be the direction, right? Which is what we are setting here. And if you think about it, we can actually just divide our direction by 45 and that will get us the Y frame. Because for example, we can just change our unit circle to go from zero to seven. So that's what we will be doing. And now it might be that we're trying to run this code right here before we've actually set it because we ne never actually set it in the create event. So let's just initialize dir as zero at first. All right, let's give that a run. There we go. So we're getting it to work, but if we're not pressing anything, it just keeps animating. So we need a way of knowing if we're moving or not. So remember, we were checking that in here. So let's just grab this. So we don't wanna be changing the direction we're facing if we're not moving. So let's go and wrap that in here. And also if we're not moving, then I want the idle to be set. So we're gonna set our X frame back to zero. And actually we don't need it incrementing either if we're not moving. I'll put that in here as well. And now let's run that. There we go. And you can see there's kind of a lag before we actually start moving. And if you want it to kind of transition immediately, you might want to make this something like 0 0.9 so that the transition between them is a little bit quicker. Just like that. And now there's a couple other things that I'm just going to tweak. Because you might not be noticing, but the actual X, Y position of our character currently, it's drawing the sprite as if it was anchored at the top left, right? Because we are drawing it at the X, Y location. And now you might want to draw it so that it is anchored at the bottom center. And that's where our X offset and Y offset is going to come in. So we're actually going to shift it over by this amount. So I'm gonna declare two new variables, var xx. And so instead of just drawing it at the x location, 
we are going to subtract that x offset. And that way we're going to kind of shift it over a little bit. And we're going to do the same for the y. And then we'll just change these. And now it should be drawing it at the appropriate location. Okay. But that is it. And you could use this exact code in all of your characters and just change these variables here accordingly. All right, so that is the final way I'm going to show you how to draw the sprites with eight directional movement. I hope you guys are well, and I will see you next time.